Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and today we're gonna try to fix Yu-Gi-Oh! with a banlist prediction. Now before you guys jump into the comment section and start typing out, I would recommend that you guys try to check out the entire list before uh, jumping into the comments, before you agree or disagree with anything, because a lot of it's kind of related uh, in some way, like certain hits are kind of chained together, and you gotta hear the logic whether or not that makes sense, otherwise you only have half a story and then again, I'm not the boss of you, so you do whatever you want. But let's start off with a date prediction. Date prediction also matters because it's part of the balance prediction. I'm gonna guess it's gonna come early April, mid-April latest. The reason why I'm stating the date prediction as an earlier one, it's mainly because we are in a tier zero S format. Like Snake Eye Engine is tier zero. We all agree that the engine itself is tier zero. And so, it does create a bit of a player drop-off when it comes to tournament turnout at your local OTS. People don't have the money to afford to play it, and if across the board, if the average amount of people participating drops, that affects the local OTSs, and when that affects the local OTSs, uh, then Konami's probably not going to be happy, so they probably would address it a bit earlier. That's my educated guess on why it would come earlier. But before I jump into my predictions, I decided to ask a couple folks in my locals which card they think should go on the ban list, and maybe in the future, all my ban list predictions will come with a bit of local participation. So let's take a look what they got. Wanderers map to one. You really hate flu. Yes, I do. <laughs> I think Snake Eyes Ash is going to get limited on the ban list. What card should go on the ban list? Ban wanted, please! Please! Please, please, please. Summon limit. Where you could do the search for sure. A card is uh, literally Vandy's MTS. Really toxic. So those are some pretty interesting takes. Save your finger typing for my list here. So I want to preface this by saying that I'm focusing this particular list because it is a tier zero format and we want to get more people pulled back into the game so we're going to try to solve the issue of not being able to play while at the same time not trying to particularly nerf a particular deck still keep them kind of in the same range as everything else all right first card we have link karibo i know a lot of you also have link karibo on your list and a lot of you don't but for those of you who don't just hear me out uh first of all it is the go-to Link 1 for anyone playing level 1 decks. And right now we're in a Snake Eye-esque format, sure. But even in the past, you all know how it is. Link Karibo is kind of your go-to monster when it comes to making an SP Lone Knight to get the additional banish effect. It's also the go-to card for Rescue Ace so that they can go into Deco Talker Heat Soul play, Link climb their way up because they have cards like Prevent to summon back from the banish. There's a lot of advantage. Even when it comes to like Drytron, you just put a Drytron monster onto the field, you Link and Link Rebo, and then if you haven't activated that monster because you summoned it through Nova, you just activate it and now you get additional body. There's just so much free body generation from this card. And the long-term advantage is that most target-based effects are no longer effective. You have to find some way to kind of trade against your opponent, especially on a level one trigger effect or ignition effect, the targeting becomes worthless. So that's kind of the standpoint of Link Rebo competitively. Oh, you might also think, oh, you can just replace it with Relinquish Anima. No, it's not even close. First of all, the downward arrow allows you to use other bodies to make other monsters. So that's still available. Secondly, when Relinquish Anima hits the graveyard, you can't bring it back for free. Your level ones aren't protected. So there's a major difference there. Next, we have Harpy's Featherstorm. This is a big blowout card in their arsenal and we're going to remove it. We take away all the big blowouts our turn skips so that people can actually come back and play. So Harpy's Featherstorm used to be like what this sack card that people had to draw into but then Triple Tactics Thrust came out so it now became a punish card for anyone trying to stop you from playing. And it is a very effective card. Originally it was supposed to be for Harpies to dig it out and they can use it themselves but hey it's a wing beast card now and you're getting your turn skipped and it's not very fun and they can chain to it so they can make you lose resources and the worst part of it all is that you have to kind of force it to activate anyway because if you don't they're just gonna use it on their own turn and basically you don't even get to play your hand traps or whatever because you're stuck with them in your hand and harpy's featherstorm is just there chewing you through it's not a card that you can draw the out there's no red reboot anymore so this one has to go and then there's also d shifter another turn skip card based off of banish based decks but it's mainly hitting towards cash tira to be honest Castor has been around for some time now, has been at least a year now, and so this is also just getting rid of all those big blowout turn skips so that people can play Yu-Gi-Oh. This is more wishful thinking than Droll in my opinion, uh, but Shifter Shifter. We all know where Shifter belongs. Whether you like getting hit by it, 
I don't like using it against my opponent. They usually get pretty salty, and it creates this negative atmosphere in general when someone loses the shift. Oh, why'd you lose? Oh, he shifted me twice. Like, congratulations. It, it feels like it's, you're really discrediting them for their win because they sacked into a card. And the only out against Shifter is Call by the Grave, cross out Designator, and you have to put in a copy of Shifter for that, and you risk breaking into it, or you have sacked into a copy of Gamma because you can stop them like that. There's not a lot of options for stopping Shifter. And due to the lack of options, having a three of like that, you sometimes you have to learn how to play around it or have to learn how to play into it. And a lot of those top decks, they are capable of playing into it. It is what it is, but a lot of the other decks, 100% they are not able to do it. And so that's why Shifter's here. Then there's Albion, the Sanctifier Dragon. Same idea. It's either that or the Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, Ross, Disciple, and the DD Orthus. You either get rid of three cards or you get over this one dragon. Personally, I think you can get rid of those three cards. It's actually better. No one plays those cards, to be honest. Uh, but it's a raw card. It's a god card support. I don't know. You can take your pick. Three cards or one card. That's where I stand with this because Gimmick Puppet Log is easier than ever. This fusion duplication, you can just copy the branded fusion. You can play basically branded fusion during your opponent's turn. Not to mention that you can somehow just open with the proper combo and still get there. I still like Branded Despia as a deck. Branded is such a fun deck to play. It's a great way to play. Shoutouts to Rhyme. Uh, but this card is pretty nasty. Like, <laughs> even during the commentary, we're fans of Branded. We're just not fans of the Gimmick Puppet Lock. So with those cards banned, it opened up the format a little bit. So we have to also you know, touch a few other cards here, starting with Snake Eye Ash. It's a super rare, so no one's really going to miss it when it does get hit to one. It deserves to be hit to one. Just look at Rescue Ace Airlifter. If Airlifter was still at three, we'd probably still see a lot more of those Rescue Ace decks. And Rescue Ace decks are still very, very powerful, even with the one Airlifter. Even when it was at one, I was still having a lot of success with that deck. And so Ash at one probably be the same thing. You have many ways to dig it out. They still have three bonfires. And I don't think they're touching bonfires just yet because the card's so new. And there's pyro support coming out for the Ash and stuff. So it's gonna be Ash. It's gonna be Ash. And Ash is one of the few cards that can search itself. Like it's the Stratos that can Stratos into Stratos. Where this is, is that a thing? It's, it's like the Ash that can search an Ash, you know? It, it's a bit much. So putting it down to one will severely limit it, but Again, there's so many easy ways to kind of dig into that particular card. One, you can bonfire into it. It's the original, they kind of go into Ash as well. Yes, it does limit the line. The whole purpose of this particular balance prediction is to limit the lines of the Snake Eye engine. And then we also have a Fire King hit. That's right, you didn't think I would hit a Fire King, but we're hitting Fire King High Avatar Kieran. It allows for a non-disruptive, sorry, non-targeting destruction that's what i'm trying to say non-targeting destruction and removal against your opponent and also summons out a card it's very very good it could get semi-limited i wouldn't be surprised but a lot of people only played two so that wouldn't really do anything i'm not sure if they're gonna hit this early but then again it's also a structure deck card since structure deck cards we know don't really have the longest lifespan in terms of most product in my opinion uh some people don't think fire king cards are gonna get hit but i think kieran is probably one of the it's like the best card and also the worst card because like you want to open with it but you want to open it with snake eye cards so you know give or take here uh then there's wanted it's a secret rare and i believe it can still take a hit here it's worth hitting to be honest it's the reason why you can cycle so hard with the deck like just when you think they're out of resources wanted banish get yourself another draw or rather banish original banish wanted get two cards and now you can recycle your entire combo in one play so you can overcommit cards I'm not a big fan of letting people overcommit cards, so here we are. Make people play the dramatic chase if they want to play the Snake Eye stuff. Then there's Pot of Prosperity. I mean, this one has been on a lot of people's radar from the last list, the list previous to that. There's many ways to gain advantage with Pot of Prosperity, and digging into six cards is a little bit ridiculous. You can definitely dig you out. It's kind of like, oh, it's too late for that. It made more sense during the Cash Tira days, but you kind of get the idea why it's strong. I wouldn't be surprised if it was on the list. And then going down to one, we have Summon Limit. I can blow away one Summon Limit, that's cool, but when you flip a second one against me, I get pretty annoyed. I think it's just like oversaturation. I think it should just follow suit with all the other floodgates. Go to one. It's very simple. And the moment you put Summon Limit to one, everyone's gonna jump shit for playing Deck Lockdown, which, I mean, I'm a little bit more okay with. There are fun ways to kind of work around Deck Lockdown, uh, but <laughs> at least I think you can still draw cards, right? <laughs> I guess. For now, Summon Limit is kind of the, 
the odd one right now. I think it's such a powerful card to have, but I, every single time I've used it, <laughs> I've also bricked on it multiple times. I don't know. I don't know what, how I feel about this card. But wait, there's one more card because right now it looks like a voiceless voice player wrote this list. Nah, it does look that way. No, let's put a Diviner of the Herald also in here because it's one of the key normal summons and I guess, okay, it really doesn't really do that much because I feel like half the time I don't even see people really summoning out this card. I think it's the other engines in that deck that bait out most of the other hand traps. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, Diviner is a one card start for the entire deck. It's very, very powerful. Uh, but when you pair it with other really annoying cards like Branded Fusion, that's when we get into a bit of a mess. But let's just put Diviner for now uh, and maybe release it later on four months down the line because there's also Drytrons that are coming back very soon and they would love to have their copy of Diviner available, which is why it's not just straight up just banned out entirely. Although I wouldn't really mind that either. It would keep everything at a nice, you know, low skill ceiling, but I'm I'm going going crazy here. So yeah, just one for the diviner. Uh then we're now into semi-limits, and hear me out, this is gonna be a bit of a wilder take. We're putting Brand Diffusion and Cash Tira Fenrir. Both of these have OTS Ultis, they've been out for a very long time. Let's hope it's past that, you know, shield of expiry or whatever. Let's just hope that, you know, that shield has expired so that you can actually touch these cards. Branded Fusion is not there because of the branded deck. Branded Fusion is there because of the voiceless voice decks that are abusing it. And either they're making, like, Free Dragoon, they're putting Trias Haratia into the graveyard so that everything is, like, super protected. Plus, they have a Mirror Jade on the board that kind of gets annoying. Or they make a Dragoon, which is even more annoying because if they start with a Dragoon, they also finish pretty hardcore uh, so that you can't really stop anything. They have basically have double Dragoon. They have a purple Dragoon and they have a blue Dragoon named Skull Guardian. It gets pretty annoying pretty fast. That's the only reason why I would suggest Branded Fusion to go in there. Not because Branded definitely has it kind of broken and also you have Fusion Duplication to kind of redupe the spell again and again. Uh, yeah, no. And then Cast Your Fenrir. It's just like an all-round best solo card that searches itself still but with the OTS copy copy the OTS copy it didn't get touched by banless and it's still here and it's probably one of the reasons why cashier is still in the game right now uh it can use a little bit of a slap on the wrist at the very least you know, it's just in my opinion it would definitely change up how we think about the OTS alties do they have an expiry i kind of want to see that approach but that would be all the cards going down. Let's take a look at this quick wish list amount of stuff going up to one, up to two, up to three. Number one, Magic Spectre Pegasus Kirin. Okay, Kirin, I mean, come on, just let us have this card back. Just let us have this. There probably could be more Pendulum stuff to go back. Uh, I'm not sure we're ready for Electromite just yet because Electromite's Electromite. I think it's actually kind of fine. You can totally get back Electromite. But anyways, Kirin, we have Magic Spectre support. You have cards that actually support Magic Spectre Kirin for coming back. Give us back the card. And then we have number 42, Galaxy Tomahawk. I've seen this in, I believe, Master Duel. No one really kind of cares too, too much about it. It is annoying that when they generate a full board of stuff and then they try to start doing link plays with it. Yes, it is kind of acting towards as Cash Tira support right now, I suppose. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference if you do give us back Galaxy Tomahawk. Maybe they'll make a uh, Appaloosa. Maybe they'll play with link monsters. Just let them try it out. It's probably one of those that I think are safe enough to kind of put back to one just to let us try. And another one that's kind of safe to let us try is going to be Supreme... Uh, what is this card? The Supreme Starving Venom. Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom. Uh, just put it at one. I know it has a burn OTK. I know it has a burn FTK. We're not enabling that. We're just going to put it at one for now just to kind of try it out for now. Uh, just for pendulum support. Let's see, I don't really have anything. I was just going through the list and picking up stuff that think like, hey, this probably won't do anything. Let's put it to one and try it out. That's kind of how it went. But this next one going to two, a bit more debatable, Blaster to two. Blaster went to one. No one even bothered trying the card out. So let's try Blaster D2. We're in a firebase format. I think of all the Dragon Rulers, Blaster would probably have the most, you know, fun times uh, available for it because it can generate a free body and it can act as a removal and it can banish some stuff. And if you're playing Snake Eye Oak, banishing a fire monster with, uh, just basically banishing fire monster doesn't really mean too much when, you know, you can just summon Oak to summon it back. And I think there's good value in it. And you can kind of, 
combo it into say uh, Borrowload Savage Dragon because this is a seven. If you got a Jet Synchron, you got a one. If you banish a Jet Synchron for it, someone will get it back. You can still make the whole play. It's kind of neat. But if you get rid of Link Rebo, now they're gonna have to actually do it in, in terms of a longer form of the combo because they don't just get a free Link Rebo to kind of get their way. And finally, the third card is going to be Dino Wrestler Pankertops. I would love to see this as a side deck option again. Uh, it's really good, even at two, but no one's really playing it, so might as well put it to three. Give us another chance to try this as our go-to generic out for everything, and I would love to see this card in three. And uh, I think that's all I have for this one. It does aim to enable play for a lot of people. I get that Voiceless Voice probably has like the edge on this one, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they're not completely dominating so far. And if Voiceless Voice ever gets too out of hand, then they'll be the targeted deck. And when they're the targeted deck, they can completely shut down. People are going to start bestialing the crap out of their graveyard, and then they won't be able to win. It's like when Drytron became the best deck, it was not the best deck anymore. Something like that. Try became the best deck. And uh, anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, well, hit that thumbs up and hit subscribe to get that notification. But if you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, this is just a banlist prediction. We kind of want to talk about things that kind of fix the format. And this is the way that I took this list. And that's my approach. So whether you agree or disagree.